Now I would like to invite not only one, but two moderators to host the session. Ibu Elvia Shauki and Bapa Ari Pratama. But before, let me read you a brief bio of Ibu Elvia Shauki and Bapa Ari Pratama. Elvia Shauki is the member of Indonesian Financial Accounting Standard Board or DESAKA IAI. She is also the member of Task Force for Comprehensive Corporate Reporting IAI. Elvia is a senior lecturer in Universitas Indonesia and also a lecturer in University of South Australia Business and University of South Australia. Before become a full-time lecturer, she worked in the banking industry for almost 22 years. The next one is Bapak Ari Pratama, is the member of Implementation Team of Financial Accounting Standard or TISAC IAI. He is also the member of Task Force for Comprehensive Corporate Reporting IAI. Ari is a lecturer in Universitas Pajajaran and also a manager of research, innovation, and partnership at Universitas Pajajaran and also an accounting consultant for various state-owned enterprises, corporation, company, and other institution. Ladies and gentlemen, now I will invite Ibu Elvia Shauki and Bapak Ari Pratama to host the session. Thank you, Monica. Uh, good afternoon, good morning, and good evening to all of you, participants of the B20 site event Task Force Integrity and Compliance, organized by the Institute of Indonesia Chartered Accountant IAI, B20, and the International Federations of Accountant IFAC, with the title of Optimizing Sustainability Governance Through a Single Set of High Quality global sustainability reporting standards. Assalamualaikum, salam sejahtera, and salam sehat for everyone who is listening, either through YouTube uh, channel or either through the, the Zoom uh, link. I would like to read the short bio of our six distinguished panelists. Let me start with our first panelist of Rafi Abe Wardana. So these are the uh, short bio of our six panelists. Rafi Abewardana is a qualified chartered accounting with ICAEW. He is the technical director at the Climate Disclosure Standards Board, CDSB, as you might know. As a member of the Technical Readiness Working Group, he is closely involved in the establishments of the ISSB which is aimed at accelerating the convergence of global sustainability standards. Our next or second panelist, we do have our distinguished panelist, Ibu Agus Saptarina. Ibu Agus Saptarina is the Director of Accounting Standards and Governance of Indonesia Financial Services Authority, or known as OJK. Previously, Ibu, uh, Ibu Rina, as what we know, was a chief executive of securities institution supervisions. The third distinguished panelist is Pak Sebastian Tobing. Pak Sebastian Tobing is a head of research of BNP Paribas Asset Management. He has many experiences as a research analyst from various different uh, securities company. Our fourth distinguished panelist is um, Ibu Rosita Ulisinaga. Ibu Rosita is a financial service industry leader in Indonesia from Deloitte, SEA, KAP, Imelda, and Rekan, with experience more than 26 years. She's a consultant and a public accountant. She's also the chair for the task force for the comprehensive corporate reporting, the uh, Institute of the IAI, and a member of the IAI National Council Board. Our fifth panelist, distinguished panelist, is Isabel Trek Sengessians. Isabel Trek Sengessian is a member of IAASB since 2018. She was previously appointed as a technical advisor to the IAASB between 2009 and 2014. She's also a member of IAASB task force in the period between 2015 and 2017. She's also an audit partner at Ernst & Young in France with 27 years of experience in auditing and works for a variety of clients. 
our last distinguished panelist is Ibu Ningsi, what we know, or Ibu Kusuma Ningsi Angkawijaya. Ibu Ningsi is a partner at KPMG Indonesia. She has managed more than 25 years of experience in auditing uh, clients in financial services. She's also a council member of uh, the Indonesian public accountant. Okay, So this is what uh, we are going to uh, have for the um, engagement of uh, discussions. That I would like to raise a few questions to the panelists. And then after the panelists addressed the questions, we would like to ask the audience uh, through Zoom uh, link or through the uh, YouTube channel to answer our short survey, our live poll questions, uh, to have the idea on what you think, on what your perceptions are. Okay, so I would like to ask the first questions to ISSP. And uh, this is going to be addressed to Rafi. Rafi, can I read uh, the three questions or do you want me to read one by one, Rafi? Uh, one by one would be great, please. Okay, yes. But um, I do know that our time is so limited. So I would like to give you uh, each answers just two minutes, okay? Is that all right, uh, Rafi? That's perfect. That's okay. So the first question is about what is the reasons that ISSP is operating under the governance structure of IFRS foundations together with the IASB? How is this arrangement between the two boards going to happen? That's my first question, Rafi. Screen is yours. Perfect. Thanks ever so much. So a, a great question. And I think it's really important to, to be clear that the um, that investors and regulators have called upon the IFRS Foundation to build upon you know the market-led initiatives, so TCFD, SASB, the Climate Disclosure Standards Boards, and others, and to use its expertise in creating accounting uh, standards used in more than 140 jurisdictions, and to bring globally comparable reporting on sustainability matters to the financial markets. As both Kevin Dancy and Sue, as well as Professor um, uh, Mardi Darren Misser had mentioned, there is you know, inconsistency with regards to sustainability related financial information. Uh, and therefore it's quite difficult to, for investors to actually compare such information from an entity. Um, so the trustees off the back of that uh, market engagement uh, created the ISSB um, based upon the feedback received in their two public consultations. So the trustee consultation on sustainability related uh, reporting and the amendments to the IFRS Foundation's constitution to accommodate the ISSB. I think you also, within your question, um, raise the importance of how the IASB and the ISSB will interact and this goes back to connectivity so the ISSB will sit alongside and work very closely in collaboration with um, uh, with, with IASB and this is to ensure that there's compatibility between you know the accounting standards and the sustainability related financial disclosures uh, so that the information which is reported by an entity within the general purpose financial reporting is clear and consistent. So they very much complement uh, one another. Um, and also the IASB and the ISSB will co coordinate their work to ensure that their standards are compatible and complementary. So this is, yeah, hopefully that addresses your question. It's quite clear. It's quite clear, Rafi. And I come to the second question. So um, based on the explicit draft, IFRS Sustainability Discourse Standards, um, that was the, uh, the one that you have explained quite clearly just now. The sustainability related financial information must be for the same reporting entity as the financial statement and published as part of its GPFR, General Purpose Financial Reporting. What does it mean by this one, Rafi? So the screen is yours, Rafi. Yeah, thanks very so much. So the objective of the IFRS um, Sustainability Disclosure Standards is to provide sustainability-related financial information that is useful to 
to primary users. And primary users is exactly the same as uh, the IASB, uh, IASB's interpretation of primary users, so investors um, of general purpose financial reporting. So when an investor picks up a general purpose financial reporting, they're able to assess the enterprise value of an entity by looking at the, you know, an entity reported entity's financial statements and sustainability related financial information. And it's all to do with the reported entity. So it's clear and consistent information to the investor and they don't need to go about and, you know, piece together different pieces of information. As I mentioned in my talk a moment ago, the general purpose financial reporting includes, but is not limited to an entity's um, uh, uh, financial statements, as well as uh, sustainability related financial uh, disclosures. And that's, uh, for example, as I mentioned, it can include a group, the consolidated financial statements, which would comprise of a, uh, of a parent company and subsidiaries. So um, ho hopefully that's, um, that, 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 that's helpful. It is indeed, it addressed the questions, uh, Rafi. My last question, you know, everyone is anxiously waiting for, uh, to get the answers of this one. So what is really the ISSB plan after the climate first approach, not the climate only approach? Thank you, Rafi. Yeah, of course. So it's important to stress that respondees to the trustee consultation broadly agreed that the ISSB should start with climate change in its standard setting while emphasising that climate should not be the sole focus. And within the actual general requirements, we really stress that. Um, and you can, if you take a look at the actual exposure drafts, we very much encourage an entity to, you know, think broadly about, um, about all sustainability risks and opportunities that an entity could be exposed to. So I once worked as a financial controller within the actual agri commodity sector, and there are various different sustainability related risks and opportunities beyond climate, such as water scarcity, um, child labor issues. Um, so what we're encouraging an entity to do is to look broadly, and we do that by supporting them on this journey, by signposting them to illustrative guidance. So use the SASB standards for, um, for, for details on potentially relevant, um, significant sustainability risks and opportunities for all your sector. Or um, if you know that social water or biodiversity is a, um, a significant sustainability risk or opportunity to your entity, use the CDSB um, framework and application guidance to help you disclose that information to your investors. So um, hopefully that's, that, that's a helpful steer, you know, in the, the plan, you know, uh, on why we took a climate first approach. And then after, I just want to stress that later on this year, we will be having a uh, consultation on the standard set in priorities for the ISSB. So building upon the general requirements and climate disclosure, what do, what do our stakeholders want for, from us to, you know, going forward, um, going beyond climate? So what standards do you want us to, to you know, to, to work on and develop um, uh, for yourself? So, um, yeah, uh, a bit of a, a signpost and exercise for yourself on what we're what we're up to for 2022. Thank you. That is an excellent um, uh, addressed um, addressing the questions. But you know, believe me, I do have a long list of questions, Rafi. But our time is so limited. So thank you so much for your response and for your replies on these uh, three questions. I would like to move to another panelist, please. Um, but before I go to move to the other panelists, distinguished participants, we hereby would like to raise a few live polling questions that you need to answer. These live poll questions can be assessed either from Zoom or from YouTube channel. It's a live questions that you will get the results instantly. Participants who watch via YouTube can participate in the poll via the Google form, which is informed to you via the YouTube description box. So can so we do have three questions like uh, 
seen in the screen. So can you please address these questions, please? Just wait for one second. Yes. Can we maybe stop? That's okay. Thank you. We got 339 responses. And um, can you highlight the uh, answers? Someone can help me for the answers. Or otherwise, I can read uh, the response from the audience that we got from 339 responses. So 9% um, said strongly disagree, 7% said disagree, undecided 9%, agree 58%, and strongly agree 16%. Thank you so much for the responses for everyone who has participated. So, and then I move to the second uh, polling, please. Oh, we do have second questions. I missed it. Thank you. So, uh, audience, I do have second questions with regard to the development of sustainability disclosure standards, which should be aligned with the financial accounting standard. Okay. Okay, I need to stop. Um, however, I have no access to get the answers. Is it possible to answer um, the results? Yes. Okay, thank you so much. So for the second question, similar to the first one, we get or we receive strongly disagree 4%, disagree 3%, and then undecided of 4%, agree 64%, and strongly agree for 26%. So that is a great response out of 446 respondents. Thank you so much. And then we will move to the second panelist, please. Okay, so um, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to have Ibu Agus Saptarina uh, as the second panelist. And I would like to raise questions to Ibu Rina. That's what we call. Can I call you Ibu Rina? Is that all right, Ibu Rina? It's okay, Ibu. Thank you. Okay. I do have two questions to Ibu Rina. So, you know, with the introductions of the um, exposed expose draft of what Rafi has explained earlier on 31st of March 2020, and also with the, uh, um, the applications in Pusman of our POJK 51 as, as, as well as on SAOJK uh, 16, 2021, okay? So my, our questions are, so that's the first question. So I, I believe you want me to read one by one or do you want me to read all the two together, Iburina? I prefer you can uh, deliver both of them. Thank you. Both of them, that's great. Okay, so the first question is Iburina. In the current regulations of POJK 51 2017 and SAOJK on number 16 2021, what are the main objectives and what kind of informations do you expect to be disclosed? And the second one, based on the <coughs> IFRS, the uh, exposed draft IFRS to sustainability disclosure standard, the one that Rafi has explained quite clearly. The sustainability related financial information or disclosures must be for the same reporting entity as the financial statement and published as part of each general financial reporting. So, as a regulator, what is the OJCA uh, response to this uh, explicit draft? That's the two questions of us. Uh, screen is yours, Iburina. 
Thank you, Kathalia. And also, I'll thank you for one introduction um, finished before. Uh, before I uh, answer uh, both question, uh, I would like to uh, explain about our OJK initiative uh, concerning about the financial uh, sustainability finance here. Uh, as you know that uh, we have already uh, produced roadmap of sustainability finance in Indonesia Fase 1, 2015 and 2019 uh, that had focused on uh, the basic regulatory framework and reporting system. And the second one is about the roadmap for sustainability finance in Indonesia uh, Fase 2, uh, 2021 uh, to 2025. Uh, uh, this is uh, the second uh, roadmap uh, is uh, a tend to uh, uh, develop the environment, uh, the sustainability uh, uh, environment like this one. Uh, to, to answer the first uh, question, uh, I would like uh, to explain that uh, based on OJK regulation number 51, uh, 2017, the regulated parties in OJK are required to uh, implement uh, sustainability finance as a comprehensive, comprehensive support from the financial services sector to create sustainability economic growth by harmonizing uh, economy, social, and environmental interests. Uh, <clears throat> the implementation uh, of the uh, sustainability finance uh, in our role uh, are obligated by the profession regarding uh, first uh, preparing and implementing a sustainability finance action plan uh, for financial service institution. And the second one is providing and reporting a sustainability report. And the third one is uh, allocating a portion of the corporate environment sustainability social responsibility fund, uh, generally known as the GSL fund in Bahasa uh, to support activity related to the implementation of sustainability finance. Uh, regarding the scan obligation concerning sustainability report, uh, the regulation has criteria uh, or indicator as the content of information that should be provided in sustainability uh, report. Moreover, for helping issuer and public companies to meet requirement, uh, OJICA also issued the guidelines for the preparation of SR, which included in OJK circulator or SAOJK number uh, 16 uh, 2021, uh, as you mentioned before, uh, regarding annual report uh, of issuer and public company. The circulator also stipulates that sustainability report is an inseparable part of the annual report, uh, but uh, it also can be uh, provided separately from the annual report. Uh, for, uh, for your information, actually there are uh, similar guidelines, but unregulated uh, that have been prepared by OJICA to help firms such as a bank, securities company, and asset management company for implementing OJICA uh, uh, 51. Uh, including to prepare or provide sustainability report. Uh, sustainability report uh, framework, uh, bo uh, both uh, POJK 51 and also SAOJK uh, 16, uh, has adopted several international standard framework, such as uh, GRR uh, and TCFD. <laughs> For example, uh, the disclosure of concept of sustainability strategy and management and sustainability governance uh, integration uh, are adopted from the TCD, TCFD concept. Uh, moreover, related to the contents of the sustainability report, uh, it has been adopting the three bottom line concept of GRI, which are economy, social, and environmental performance disclosure. Uh, in addition, POJK uh, 51 and also uh, SAOJK uh, 16 uh, mostly regulates the main information that must be described by the company in the sustainability report. The policy regulated are principle-based, uh, 
uh, so that the company can present technically uh, relevant information tailored to the needs of inv investor or other stakeholder. For example, in sustainability reporting, companies are required to disclose information about emission. To fulfill this ob uh, obligation, the company can refer to several metrics provide, provided by international standards. For example, TCFD, SASB, and GRI. Uh, and also to improve quality of report and to increase uh, public trust, uh, POJK 51 and SAOJK 16 also uh, encourage the company to use the external independent verifier uh, or assurer to do a verification uh, or assurance of sustainability report. Uh, then I will uh, explain the answer of the second question. Uh, in order to develop sustainability financial uh, ecosystem, as well as to support for OJK commitment to climate change adaptation and mitigation uh, aligned with uh, Paris Agreement goals that started uh, to NDC document, uh, OJK support the ISSB an initiati initiative to establish standards for sustainability financial reporting or sustainability reports for issuer and public company and financial institution. Considering the differences and any different uh, sustainability standard, it might be the obstacle for investor and stakeholder to assess the implementation of sustainability finance. OJICO support the implementation of international standards, including when IFR sustainability discourse standard has been issued. Uh, through POJK 51 and SAOJK 16, particular for issuer and public company, uh, implementation of international standards such as IFRS sustainability discourse standard has been, uh, has been accommodated by existing framework uh, in the regulation as uh, I explained before. Uh, however, regarding the exposure draft IFS sustainability this, uh, consult standard, I hope the view that we have some concern to be discussed further. Uh, first, uh, for the uh, standard adoption, uh, we have to make sure whether IFRS sustainability standard should be fully adopted by Indonesia and other jurisdictions, uh, or it can be adjusted like adoption of IFRS accounting standard in Indonesia on PSAK. The second one uh, is about the, uh, according to explore draft uh, of climate related disclosure, uh, we see that it proposes uh, an entity to require this, to disclose information that enables issuer of general purpose financial reporting to understand uh, government disclosure, uh, climate risk and opportunity, transition plan, and so on. Regarding to this, uh, we need to know more about the format framework of general purposes of financial statement here, whether is it similar to annual report or not. And the third one, uh, as we know that financial reporting uh, general purpose uh, provide the information of financial position and the operational results uh, and uh, Oh, on the end of the certain book year, uh, it shows the historic uh, data. While uh, sustainability report, it, uh, re report not only contains the historical event atau, or uh, activity, but also contains target or the entity's next plan. So the difference on the data may be an issue. Uh, based on our experience in formatting the regulation of financial statement general purpose and disclosure, we consider to avoid misleading information, especially information of pro forma info or uh, the information about the future uh, result. Uh, besides that, uh, regarding this report, uh, we also concern how to keep the integrity of uh, financial statement general purpose itself. That's all about our response regarding the exposure draft of IFSS sustainability discourse standard. Hopefully it could be 
it could be, uh, give an additional input on the draft. Thank you. Bu Thank Amelia. you, Burina. That was excellent. Um, clarify some of our doubts, our questions uh, in our mind. Thank you, Iburina, much appreciated. So uh, I would like to ask help assistance to raise for the live poll questions, please. Okay, so distinguished attendees, we do have the third live poll questions. Would you like to uh, respond to this live poll questions, please? Okay, um, very good. Yes. I'll wait until we get more responses. That's great. I will stop until 400. Yes, can we stop? Thank you. Okay. Can we stop? Yes, thank you. So we got a response, or a total response of 419. And 80% say that um, one sustainability report is enough. And that consists of the ISS, ISSB uh, extended um, ISSB report and the extended local regulations instead of the total sustainability report. So the rest 20% answer the second questions. I would like to pass on to Paari Pratama as the, our second moderator. Screen is your Paari. Thank you very much, Bu Elvia. And good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all ladies and gentlemen, all participants of this webinar. This is a very great opportunity for me. And of course, we are still having another great presenter and also speakers for today's webinar. And now I will move to the next speaker. So we now have the next speaker, the chair of the task force, Comprehensive Corporate Reporting of Indonesian Institute of Accountant. And we have now with here, Ibu Rosita Ulisinaga. Good afternoon, Bu Rosita Ulisinaga. Good afternoon, Pak Ari. Okay, I hope you are well. So, as uh, chair of the task force of comprehensive corporate reporting of EAE, there are several questions. Basically, we need to introduce ourselves to the public. So we have three questions. Do you like me to read all the questions or do you want to answer it one by one? I prefer to do it one, uh, one by one, Pari. Okay, one by one. Okay, there are three questions. I will read the first question. So after we hear the presentation from IWSB and also from OJK, so what is EIE response to the ISSB initiatives? Well, this establishment well, well, of ISSB, I mean, like the publication of IFRS sustainability disclosure standards, and etc. Okay, uh, thank you, Pari. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Okay, good. So I think the, the first and foremost, uh, IAI fully support the establishment of the ISSB. And based on what uh, we heard uh, today from ISSB, uh, we recognize how the ISSB initiative are significantly different to existing sustainability disclosure framework that we usually use because this new ISSB standard aims to ensure one compatibility and to interconnectedness of sustainability disclosure with financial reporting that meets the needs of the capital market. And uh, the interconnectedness between sustainability related financial information in financial reporting is the main reason why it is very important for the accounting profession to take lead party. We have heard this from Sue and Rafi 
that it has highlighted in the exposure draft IFRS sustainability disclosure standard that a lot of requirements are actually compatible and connected with financial reporting standard under EFRS, which Indonesia uh, is actually adopted IFRS, right? So some of them, if you watch uh, Rafi uh, presentation is definition of reporting entity is aligned with the financial reporting. Uh, interim reporting is actually aligned. Qualitative characteristic of useful information is 100% aligned. Even the presentation of currency is aligned. So therefore, I think it is very important for II as the accounting profession to take lead this. And the establishment of the ISSB under the IFRS Foundation governance structure together with the ISB is the right step taken towards creating a strong linkage between financial and sustainability related information. And uh, you, you also heard from Pa Mardiasmo, right? With the current mandates given to III as the financial reporting standard set in Indonesia, e EIE or IAI and accountancy profession is taking lead in bringing this initiative to Indonesia. And in, this, in December 2020, we took the important first step to establish IAI Task Force on Comprehensive Corporate Reporting. This is multi-stakeholder task force comprises of representative of relevant regulators, preparers, and also professional accounting organization. And as previously mentioned by Professor Mardiasmo in his address, to take our initiative to the next step, IAI is planning to revise our article of association uh, in the next Congress to accommodate the establishment of sustainability standard board parallel to the existing Indonesian Financial Reporting Standard Board. This is subject to our Congress approval, of course. This is, of course, mirroring to what the IFRS Foundation has done to accommodate the establishment of the SSB as an equal to the ISB. That's my uh, response to the first question, Pari. Thank you very much, Bu Rosita. It's, this is a very clear response. So if I want to take a point, so the first point is yeah, he fully supported the establishment I, IWSB. And also we already hear from Bu Rosita, there are various big plans yeah, ahead to support the establishment of the sustainability reporting in the accounting profession. Now, we already learned about the yeah, e action. Now we want to know more about the accounting profession itself. So my second question is, what are the roles of accounting professions in response to the IWSB initiatives? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Pari. I think we heard from Pak Mardiasmo. We also heard from the IFAC uh, uh, president, right? It is absolutely crucial for the accounting profession to take lead in the ISSB initiative. The aspiration to establish a strong linkage between the ISSB standard and existing financial reporting standard would require the expertise and also the competency that I believe our profession have built into our understanding of financial reporting. Uh, and in addition to that, professional accountants are equipped with the right skill set to breach the financial and sustainability related information. I think now is kind of two reports, right? Which is not connected each other. But now if, because this is interconnected and compatible, we need to merge these two reports into one integrated report, right? Therefore, the understanding of a company business model, risks and opportunities, system and processes, uh, with knowledge of sustainability factor and the ability to, to collaborate with multidisciplinary experts is actually our expertise as accountant. Uh, furthermore, professional accountants usually are at the center of information flows, are at the center of the decision making. This is uniquely position ourselves to capture, to analyze, to report, and to give assurance of the sustainability information together with financial information. In addition to that, because this report need to be supported by a strong corporate governance, our profession as accountant 
also has the skill set to drive this strong corporate governance party. So with those kind of expertise, I think it is the right moment for us as accountant to be taking the role on this initiative. Thank you very much. There's an excellent answer, Bu Rosita. So I also took your point about whether we must understand not only financial accounting, not only financial reporting, but also we need to understand now more about the sustainability reporting because in the future, we not just combine the information, but we will integrate the information of sustainability perspective to the financial reporting. So I think this is a new challenges for us, the accountant. But my final questions will be how the Indonesia should respond to the IWSB initiative. So what do you think our response should be? Yes. yes. Under Italy's presidency in 2021, the G20 leaders have recognized the work program of the IFRS Foundation to develop a baseline global reporting standard under robust governance and public oversight. Collectively, we must build on this and strengthen our commitment from recognition in 2021 to encouragement for members of G20 to lead by example and support the ESSB initiative. And as, as a member of G20, Indonesia must proactively involve in the ESSB standard setting process, not only just follow, but lead and involve proactively. Indonesia must leverage on our exposure, strategic position, and increasingly important role, especially with the 2022 G20 presidency, to take real and impactful action toward contributing to the ISSB initiative and building our own Indonesia sustainability reporting ecosystem. Ari, I would strongly suggest for Indonesia to consider taking an active role in the ISSB standard setting process, for example, through membership with the Sustainability Standard Advisory Forum of the IFRS Foundation. The time for Indonesia to act is now, Pari, and IAI, together with all the accounting profession in Indonesia, is ready to play our parts. Thank you. Thank you very much, Burosita. So I already understand the optimistic tone coming from Task force of comprehensive corporate reporting EIE. So there are many big plans. We need to take active roles. And 2022, Indonesia is the president of the G20. I think the time is now for us to take action. Okay, so that's a very clear message from Burosita. Thank you very much, Burosita, for your time and also for your answer. And before we move to the next speaker, as usual, there will be a live polling for. Uh, all the attendants here. And um, so based on the previous answer, do you agree that our national accounting standard board need to be broadened to include the IFRS sustainability disclosure standard? So you can answer the question now. Okay. The numbers now reach around 15, 16%. I will wait just a moment until get at least 40 or 50% of all the participants. The time is very limited, so uh, we are very sorry. We are apologize because we cannot wait all the participants to answer. Okay. So, okay, it, I think it's already 40 seconds, so we can end the poll now. And we can end the poll and then we can share the result now. So as you can see, 85%, yeah, 70% say it's agree, 15% say it strongly agree. So 85% of all the participants or all the participants in the polling agree that the national standards should be broadened. Okay. So I think that's the polling questions for the polling number four. And we still have another polling questions. Okay. We are now moving to the poll, live polling questions number five. Okay, so after the questions number five, okay, there are another questions. 
So the exposure draft of IFRS sustainability disclosure standard responds to call from primary users, investor, lenders, and the creditors of general purpose as reporting for more consistent, complete, comparable, and verifiable sustainability-related financial information to help them thus an entity and price value. Does it bring more value to your needs? So do you agree with this statement or not? Okay, so we are waiting now for your answer. Okay, there are lots of you who already participate. Thank you very much. I think it show how enthusiastic we are in this event. Thank you very much once again. And I'm, we are very apologize that we cannot wait for all the participants to fill the form. So I think we need to stop right now. It's already 43%, so I think it's already representative. So we see now from the poll, and uh, you can see on your screen, 75% 75, 75 say they agree with this statement. Even 12% of them strongly agree. So 87% strongly agree or agree with this statement. So I think this is another big leap for us, okay? This is more enthusiastic and optimistic tone. I hope we can implement this sustainability reporting standard soon in our uh, financial system. Like what Burosita said, it's all about ecosystem, okay? So I think that's the end of the polling session and we need to move to another speaker. And for another speaker, the investor session, I think I will have to pass the moderator back to Bu Elvia. Well, Pia, the moderator seat is now yours again. Thank you, Pak Sebastian. Thank you, Pak Ari. So, Pak Sebastian, can you hear me, Pak Sebastian? Hello, Pak Sebastian. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Loud and clear. Yeah. Yes. Okay, good. Thank you so much. Pak Sebastian Tobing represents um, PNP Paribas Asset Management. It's a very important stakeholders, the users of the financial reporting, as well as the sustainability related financial disclosures. So, Pak Sebastian, I do have uh, two a big lengthy questions to you. So, do you want me to read one by one or do you want me to read the two together? Well, let's do one by one. They do it one by one. Yeah. Okay, fine. So first one, considering there are various sustainability disclosure frameworks, as you might know, do you think the current information is sufficient enough for you for the benefit of investors in making decisions, i.e. decisions usefulness? Is this okay. enough? If this is not enough, what is or are missing? Screen is your Pastor Sebastian. Okay, well, uh, now this is regarding the publicly listed companies in Indonesia, right? Yes. So, uh, well, if, if in Indonesia, this this uh, whole ESG reporting uh, is something that is still relatively new. Uh, obviously, in, in BNP, uh, we have always, I think ESG, we think is very important. Uh, so in the past several years, we have been act very active in talking to companies uh, 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 and, and talking to them and how to improve their ESG reporting um, because simply that uh, we need data, right? From a fund manager's perspective, uh, with if, if it's, it's only the company knows, let's say, how much carbon footprint uh, it, uh, we, we cannot, that kind of, it's not the kind of thing that we can, we can guesstimate. Uh, and actually a lot of uh, companies uh, have, uh, 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 they have already tried to be socially responsible or environmentally friendly. It's just that they don't, maybe a lot of them don't document this kind of things. Uh, so uh, uh, in terms of willingness to, uh, uh, to do ESG reporting, um, I think given that oh, there's also some push from a lot of stakeholders, you know, not, not just the fund managers, but also government and, and um, uh, other stakeholders, that we, we start seeing this uh, willingness from the companies uh, to, to do ESG reporting. Uh, but it's just that a lot of them have just started, so they, they don't know yet, some of them don't know yet how. Yeah. Um, and we, we can see that I mean, if you just look at last year, there are about 700 companies uh, listed in IDX, right? 
um, of which maybe about only about 50 companies uh, that have uh, done a comprehensive sustainability reporting, like a, a special report by itself, instead of just a, you know, a few pages inside the annual report. So uh, we have a long way to go. So there are 650 more companies that, that uh, we would like to see more data from. Uh, and I'm sure that we will, uh, or we will see progress uh, and that's what's important, right? To, to see continued progress uh, in, in this regard. So yes, of course, uh, at, at this point, uh, what um, I would like to see is as an investor uh, is one, um, well, more companies do more uh, reporting on sustainability in terms of uh, a more comprehensive reporting. And number two, in terms of uh, standard, having a more standardized, uh, because a having a standardized uh, sort of metrics uh, of, of what or, or things that they need to report that makes it easier for us as an investor. And B, it also makes it easier for them, uh, for the companies as well, right? Um, and uh, and in, in that regard, you know, having this, this uh, uh, SSB draft, uh, that also helps. So uh, yeah, I'm very happy to, to have this forum uh, and, and hopefully we, uh, uh, I'm sure this is, this is a draft, right? I'm sure it's, it will be refined and refined further in the future. So this is a great start. I believe uh, preparers start to um, realizing that the value creations, so generating the enterprise value is there. This is why maybe if I can take from your speech just now, is that the gap or the missing information is getting lower and lower, is that right? But we still wait for another 650 to disclose fully about the sustainability activities. But do you think that the gaps is getting smaller, you think, that because of the enterprise um, value that uh, uh, realized? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, uh, anyway, they, they, uh, they, a lot of them have done some of the things anyway, right? in terms of uh, CSR, uh, in terms of being environmentally more careful, uh, watch how much electricity they use, uh, you know, how much paper they use, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a matter of documenting the whole things and, and, uh, and then reporting them, right? Um, and uh, the good thing is that uh, all these the companies are, are being more aware of the importance of, uh, of documenting and, ES in, 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 um, and reporting this, this uh, uh, sustainability. Uh, and from that point, I'm sure that, that they will improve their whole sustainability process, right? Uh, yeah. because then they would know, okay, I'm okay. Maybe I need to, well, if I compare to the other companies in my sector, well, I'm using a lot of paper, apparently, maybe yeah. they didn't realize that before. Right. So yeah. The, yeah. I'm sure once they start reporting and then they will, uh, uh, improve a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I thank you for that. That is really clear. Uh, Sebastian. My second question is that. With the exposure draft, IFRS sustainability disclosure standard that Rafi has responded just now. Um, so the response to call from primary users, i.e. investors, lenders, and other creditors of general purpose financial reporting for more consistent, complete, more complete, more comparable, and verifiable of sustainability related financial informations to help them to assess uh, the entity's enterprise value. Do you think, or does it bring to a more value the need of investors? I raised it earlier about that value creations. And do you believe that the value creations is getting larger and bigger, but Sebastian? Um, well, I think if you look at on a top-down basis, right, if uh, in terms of uh, caring about ESG, uh, the value creation is definitely there, right? Uh, it's, we have, I think uh, uh, historically, we've always looked at 
governance has always been important, even 50 years ago. Right? And then uh, uh, social in, socially responsible investing becomes more uh, a trend, maybe somewhat in the 70s, 80s. I think the environmental factor may be uh, a bit more recent, actually, that maybe about the last 20 years or so, uh, and then became ESG. Right? Uh, now, but what a lot of studies have, have, uh, uh, have discovered is that uh, there is a relationship between all the E, S, and the G. So the com a company who, in, in it, on a daily basis, try to care more about the environment in doing its business, uh, in general, are also, also have better governance. And a company who cares more about the community where it operates, so being socially responsible, uh, yeah, in general, also have better governance. Um, uh, and you know, being social responsible that that increases the brand value because it, it may take time, but the customers, uh, if the, if it's a consumer company, the customers uh, uh, eventually would notice that. Um, so we always believe that uh, uh, having good ESG uh, for a company that would uh, increase its value over time. It would also increase its return, returns to shareholders over time uh, and, and return on equity as well. So um, we believe that they all go hand, hand in hand, right? So it's, it's, it's a win-win situation uh, when you look at ESG. Um, now, on, on the, if you look at the, the ISB proposal, I think, the, well, I think like what, I mentioned as well earlier is that having something where it's compatible also with the existing with the locals uh, and also the others uh, 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 standards that, that are going uh, that helps the companies a lot um, and whichever makes it easier for the companies uh, is we think it's great because that would help them uh, would make it, it, it encourage them to do the reporting and, and to do a more comprehensive sustainability reporting, which, uh, of course, as investors, that's what we would like. Great. That is really in line with the research conducted by many researchers, apparently, even during the pandemic of COVID-19, those who produce ESG reporting are committed to a, a to disclose their activities uh, in terms of sustainability activities, um, those who get more fundings even during the tough time of COVID-19. So, Pat Sebastian, really appreciate it for your response, for your explanations addressing our two uh, questions. I would like to get um, someone to help me to rate, uh, show the poll questions, polling live questions, please. Okay. So attendees, distinguished attendees. Okay, I would like to get more responses. 22%, 25 more, please. Okay, a bit more. I'm waiting for you then. Okay, we may stop now. Thank you. Yes, so great. We got 78% agree on the questions that the exposed draft of IFRS sustainability discloses standard response to calls from what primary users, i.e., as you know, the investors, lenders, and other creditors of general purpose financial reporting. That is really a great response. Okay, thank you, Pastor Sebastian, for your time. And I would like to move to the next um, presenter. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Pastor Sebastian. So the next one, um, I would like to move it to, okay, so Ibu, The 
Next one, I would like to move it to Paari Pratama. Okay, is that right? Okay, thank you very much, Bu Elvia. And uh, we are now moving to the next speaker. And the next speaker is uh, Mrs. Isabel Trangsengisen, member of IAASB and the IAASB Sustainability Assurance Consultative Group. Uh, do you now with us? Yes, um, hello everybody. And uh, we, we spoke a lot of uh, the sustainability reporting standards, uh, but as we said that uh, verifiability or auditability and trust are key. Um, it is relevant now to cover also um, assurance standard and have an overview of where we are with uh, the IAASB uh, in working on this uh, assurance standard. So I have a few slides, if we can show them. Great. Uh, so we can move to the next slide. So as it has been outlined already, uh, there is an increasing demand for uh, sustainability or ESG reporting. Uh, we had great testimonies from uh, investors but we know also that funding providers, regulators, NGO are asking for more sustainability reporting. And the great move of the last years is that we are slightly moving from voluntary reporting to mandatory reporting with major jurisdictions that have just stepped up or introduced new requirements to uh, report on uh, ESG informations or uh, aspect thereof. Uh, and with that, we have seen also a move towards mandatory assurance. We've recently, and you may have seen that, for example, in EU or also in the US, uh, there are proposals for limited assurance and sustainability uh, information, and with a step up to reasonable assurance at a later date. So what are we doing at the IAASB? Next slide, please. Um, uh, at the IAASB, I'm waiting for the slide. Yes, it's it. Um, uh, we, we, we need to do something. Uh, and so what is driving us on the need for IAASB action? Uh, we see now that multiple assurance standards do exist. IAASB has standards and guidance that can be used for assurance engagement on sustainability ESG information. But there are also other standard setters who have also established uh, other standards such as ISO or AA1000. Um, uh, so therefore, as much as there is a risk of fragmentation in the reporting standards, which may somewhat be addressed with the ISSB and GRI, we, saw also, we see also a risk of fragmentation in the assurance space. And if we have this fragmentation, this would lead to confusions among users uh, who may not realize or understand the difference between the various uh, assurance frameworks. So we recognize this risk uh, and we also um, acknowledge the fact that not all assurance standards provide the same level of quality in assurance. So we are not starting from scratch. IWSB has already uh, standards and guidance in place, uh, but we understand that more needs to be done on these uh, existing standards and guidance uh, for these standards and guidance to be recognized as the reference international standards for assurance uh, sustainability. And we also, um, we have also identified that uh, there are several uh, challenges that are uh, encountered uh, in practice. And we need to deal also with these challenges uh, in our standards. So to do that, we work actively uh, to reduce the, the risk of fragmentation. We are very engaged with key stakeholders uh, to reinforce the need for global assurance standards. So we work closely with uh, European Commission, IOSCO, Financial Stability Board, CEAOB, IFIAR, to name a few. 
and we have clearly indicated the IWSB commitment to take action in this space. So next slide, please. So what do we need to cover? Um, we, we have heard a lot of voices and we know that we need to encompass all sustainability topics. So we cannot focus only on E, S or G, environmental, social or governance. We need to cover them all. We also need, of course, to cover climate. We need to cover also all topics, strategy, controls, risk management. Uh, we need to cover all mechanisms of reporting. Uh, I saw there were a lot of questions regarding where the information is located. It can be in management report, it can be integrated report, it can be a separate sustainability report. So all this needs to be covered. And uh, we need also to cover all reporting standards. So IWSB will not focus on uh, only on ISSB standard, but we need to cover also other reporting frameworks in order to meet the needs of multi-stakeholder, uh, which is really uh, what the IWSB is doing, uh, working to have high quality international standards that can be applied everywhere and by everybody. So what are our preliminary ideas? If we move to next slide, please. The first key step is that it's very clear now that there is a need for international standards for assurance and sustainability. Uh, we held during the IWSB March board meeting several breakout sessions, and we discussed with a lot of people, and it was clear after these breakout sessions that there was a strong support for standard setting. There's a clear recognition that we need to have a branded standard that would refer to assurance and sustainability. For the moment, uh, we already have ISAE 3000 revised, but ISAE 3000 is not only on sustainability, it can cover a broad range of subject matter. And we're also convinced now that uh, guidance will not address stakeholder expectation because the ask is for a robust standard. So we need to move ahead. This will be a journey. Uh, and we need to start by uh, identifying what is most important to start uh, the journey and uh, develop the architecture of what we need to do. Uh, but whatever we do, we will need to be sure that we have a complete assurance solution. We don't want to have gaps in sustainability assurance standards. So what do we have for the moment? As I mentioned, we have ISAE 3000 revised. It's there. It has been already revised, so we can use it as a starting point. We also have some other subject matter specific ISAE. For example, ISAE 3410, which deals with uh, greenhouse gas statements or ISAE 3402, which deals with uh, controls at services organization. So that's a starting point. We also are hearing that the EER guidance we released last year, which is now called Sustainability and Extended External Reporting Guidance, uh, has a, um, is extremely helpful and has a real value and is uh, broadly used. This guidance was released by the IWSB in April 2021, and it has been relabeled to add sustainability in the title in December 2021. So it's really something on which we need to build on. And last but not least, we also hear from the practitioners that uh, where ISAE 3000 does not provide specificity, practitioners are used to go to the ISAs, the International Standards on Auditing, uh, to find some guidance. So we also can get some inspiration from uh, the ISAs. Uh, so that's what we have, but we also need to add to that um, specificity on the challenges that have been identified by the practitioners. And if we move to the next slide, we will focus of, on some of these priority challenges. So what are people saying? People are saying that what is 
um, challenging is the difference between limited and reasonable assurance. Well, when do we know that we have obtained sufficient evidence which is required to reach the, the appropriate confidence level? Uh, some people also have the perception that they receive more assurance from limited assurance engagement than they should. Uh, so that's something we need to work on. The second challenge is the suitability of the reporting criteria. This may evolve as more and more uh, recognized criteria will exist, but when um, there's a lot of judgment in applying the criteria, that's a challenge for the preparer. Third challenge is the scope of the engagement. Sometimes we have to provide assurance on a full sustainability report, and some of the times we have to report on various aspects of the information. Fourth challenge, evidence. What is evidence? When do you know you have enough evidence? How do you know the information is complete? And what do you do when you cannot obtain sufficient evidence? For example, if uh, uh, the system, the internal control uh, is not sufficient, what is the impact on your assurance uh, opinion? And last but not least, fifth challenge, which is materiality. Some of the framework use a double materiality concept, while some of the framework have a single materiality concept. And materiality has to be assessed either on narrative information, qualitative information, or on uh, information that is um, more with figures uh, as we have used in the financial statements. And it's not easy to add um, materiality when it comes, when it relates to information from a different nature. So you see, we have uh, five important challenges at least uh, to deal with uh, in what we are planning uh, to do. So moving to the next slide, um, what is the way forward? So at the moment, um, although we had this discussion in March with the IAASB and the breakout session, and we had uh, follow-up discussions with the IAASB staff and the working group, so we have some ideas, but we have not formally discussed and agreed with the IAASB about the way forward. So we need to go back to the IAASB with proposals to, de to determine the action we will do. Uh, and agree and progress uh, on these actions. Uh, we don't know exactly how it will work. Uh, we have to be flexible and open-minded. Uh, this maybe project could be of a different nature. Uh, first of all, because of the perceived urgency uh, of the topic, and also the fact that we have a recent material available. Uh, I mentioned the EER guidance. Uh, so we need to be flexible, open-minded, and see how best we can progress uh, in order uh, to deliver uh, what uh, everybody is asking us uh, to deliver, uh, high-quality assurance standard on sustainability information. Uh, next slide, please, which should be the last, just to remind you that you can follow the IWSB work on various social networks. Uh, but more than that, as you know, our meetings are public, so you can uh, um, attend. Um, you can attend remotely, online, or uh, after the meeting. All our public meeting uh, on our YouTube channel. So don't hesitate to connect and go go back uh, to our previous meetings. So in a nutshell, that's why I wanted to cover. Uh, I, maybe you have some questions for me. Okay, thank you very much. What a wonderful presentation and a very clear message that we already hear. So reporting and assurance are always intertwined. Okay, so there are several interesting questions, but the time is very limited. So I will ask only two questions. And this has a preamble, so maybe I have to ask the question one by one. So the first question, I want to look at the exposure draft of the IFRS Sustainability Disclosure Standard. It sets on the standard that the sustainability-related financial information 
must be for the same reporting entity as the financial statements and published as part of its general purpose financial reporting. So there is a clear integration between financial reporting and the sustainability reporting. So I want to ask how IWASB respond to this in setting the relevant auditing standards. And what do you think will be the challenge in this kind of situation? So maybe that's the first question. Okay. So the location of the information within the general um, purpose financial information will be key to determine the work effort that the, um, the auditor or the practitioner will perform. If the information is provided in the financial statements, for example, in the notes, then it is covered by the international standard on auditing. And as an example, I remind that IWSB has already released the staff audit practice alert on climate related risks, and it was in October 2020. If the information is not in the financial statements, but is considered as an over information, as we call them in the ISAS, then the auditor applies ISA 720. But if um, the, there's a request for assurance on sustainability ESG information outside of the financial statements, then the auditor or another practitioner uh, can apply uh, the assurance standard. So one of the challenge would be uh, for uh, the user to understand that depending on the location on the information, uh, which is maybe inside or outside the audited financial information, uh, the work effort may be different and the level of assurance, if any, uh, may be also different. And I also wanted to mention uh, uh, regarding the timing of the reporting, uh, that maybe some other reporting framework other than the ISSB may not be aligned with the financial reporting period. So this would create another challenge because it would be very difficult to assess the consistency bet between the sustainability information disclosed and uh, the impact addressed in the financial statements. Okay, I, that's very clear. There are a lot of challenges to us that we need to tackle in the upper cup. Um, um, I want to ask the second question because we have a very limited time. Uh, I want to ask based on your presentation. In your presentation, you indicate that the IWSB doesn't intend to align its assurance standard setting with any particular reporting frameworks. So with that in mind, will that create uncertainty regarding how to conduct an assurance engagement of information prepared under dominant frameworks which are emerging? such as the SSB standards or exposure, or maybe the GRI standards or any other standards. So maybe that's the question. So I, I will try to, uh, to have a, a, sh a short and quick answer because I know we are late. Uh, but just to remind that all IWSB standards are framework neutral. That's also the case for the ISAs. You can apply IFRS, you can apply your local gap. You always can perform an audit applying the ISAs. So that's exactly the same for the assurance standard. And it's very important for our standard to be, uh, to be able to be applied worldwide. And even when there will be some add-ons uh, locally, uh, that uh, the IWSB standard can be applied. But of course, as we always do, we will certainly consider the core element of a do um, dominant reporting framework to ensure that uh, any standard is practical and fit for purpose when being applied across different parts of the world. So that's what we have done with IFRS for the ISAs, and that's what we will intend to do. So that was my answer. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Thank you very much, Ms. Isabel, for all the presentation and all your answer. Thank you very much. And we hope we can see you in the future. Thank you very much once again. Um, we still have a next speaker, but we still have another polling questions for you. So maybe the committee can show the polling questions. So this is our sixth polling, okay, polling number six. There is an urgent need to develop assurance standards for stability report based on exposure draft of IFRS stability disclosure standard. So do you agree or not agree, or you can speak your mind? <laughs> yeah. 
just answer the question and wow, there are lots of questions. I'm sorry, there are lots of answer coming in. Wow, 200. Okay, I will wait just for another moment. Okay, I think I can close this poll in another three seconds. Okay, one, two, and then three. Okay, I'm sorry, we have a very limited amount of time. So as you can see, the results, I share the result now to you. And we can see the majority of you answer agree and then strongly agree. So there are a total of 83% agree with the urgent need to develop assurance standard. So in Indonesia, I hope we can also move on just not just to make a reporting standard, but also to make assurance standards. So these standards can be complement and will boost the sustainability reporting in Indonesia. And talking about the sustainability assurance in Indonesia, we still have one more speaker from Indonesian Public Accounting or Public Accountant Association, or we know EAP. And we now, yeah, we already know EAP, and we now have a speaker. And the speaker for representing EAP is Ibu Kusumaningsi Angkawijaya. Good afternoon, Bu Kusumaningsi Angkawijaya. Good afternoon, Pak Ari. Okay. okay, it's already 5 p.m., everyone. <laughs> but I hope you can hold on for a moment. Yeah, we need to understand and also listen very carefully about the plan for the assurance standard setter or perhaps the public accounting profession response to this. And maybe I will go directly to the questions. There are three questions. And maybe the first question will be your short feedback about the IWASP presentation. And perhaps after the short feedback, perhaps you can tell us the ERP's view of the IWASP initiatives. And also, I want to know your opinion about the assurance level because the assurance level of the sustainability report now is very limited. So what do you think that our public accountants, can they able to provide a assurance level due to the publication of this IFRS sustainability standards? So for Ibu Kusumanaingsi, the time is yours. Thank you, Pari. Uh, that starts a very good question. So first, uh, I would like to thank you, Isabel, for such insightful presentations on the ISB action, work, and focus in the development of a complete assurance solutions on sustainability. Isabel, your presentation is very useful for our extended external reporting task force, but this is Indonesia EER task force. Initially, we named it Integrated Reporting Task Force, but we renamed it, yeah, which I, uh, Indonesian Institute of Certified Public Accountant, we call it IAPI, already formed this task force back in December 2020. Yeah. With the objective is to serve the public interest through developing technical and practical guidance to support our practitioners in providing assurance service related to external, extended external reporting. So basically our view and observations in relation to the sustainability assurance is pretty much aligned with ISB, yeah, from what uh, I heard yeah, from uh, Isabel presentation. Yeah. Firstly, our recent limited research on 50 largest listed entity by market capitalization as of 31st March 2022, so this year, reveal that 33 out of 50 entities have issued some sort of sustainability reports in 2021. Yeah. 13 of 33 entities have assurance statement yeah, in which 54% use ESI 3000 limited assurance and 46% use AA 1000 AS moderate level. So this result really told us that ESI 3000 or our local equivalent SPA 3000 have not been widely used in performing assurance on sustainability reporting in our jurisdiction. 
And also this is an indication like what Isabel say, yeah, that there are multiple assurance standards and there also a fragmentations yeah, in insurance. Yeah. And secondly, yeah, we are of the same view with ISB that there's an urgent need for a high quality international standard for assurance on sustainability in order to ensure credibility, reliability, and accuracy of sustainability related disclosure. So having heard the presentation from Isabel, I am personally convinced, and I hope my colleague in EER Task Force also echo me, that the strategic initiative of IEAP to develop standards and guidance for assurance on EER through the adoptions of standards and guidance issued by ISB is pretty much aligned with the ISB initiative. We also started with what we have right now, which is ESI 3000s or uh, SPA 3000s. We are currently in the process of revising ESI 3000s in order to be in line with IFAC Handbook 2020. We are at the final stage of adopting the non-authoritative guidance on applying ESI 3000 revised as what mentioned by Isa I I Isabel, yeah, re regarding the EER assurance engagement as issued by ISB yeah, in April this year and renamed yeah, in December the, uh, 2021. Actually, April last year and renamed in December 2021. And the other thing which I think is very important is we are also in the process of adopting ESI 3410, the standard for assurance engagement on greenhouse gas statements. We believe yeah, that this standard will be very relevant yeah, for addressing a growing demand for stakeholders for trusted carbon emission information. This is certainly in line yeah, with our government targets to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 29% by 2030 in our own efforts, or 41% with international support, and then to achieve net zero emissions by 26 or sooner. So with this, our standard setter boards have set priority to issue exposure draft on ESI 3000 revised together with the ED non-authoritative guidance in September this year and the ED ESI 3410 in December this year too. So I think that's my response to your first question, Pak Ari. And for the okay. second questions, yeah, because you already thought the second question, basically we strongly believe yeah, that in order to perform a high quality sustainability assurance engagement, the sustainability reporting should be prepared using a high quality reporting standards that will achieve greater relevance, consistency, reliability, and comparability in sustainability reporting. I hope all of you agree with this statement. Yeah. Therefore, EAP is of the view that the announcement of the establishment of the International Sustainability Standards Board, IWSB, at the COP26 conference last year in Glasgow, marked as a significant milestone in addressing the complexity and confusion of sustainability requirements. EAP supports the ISB initiative to issue a global baseline for investor-focused sustainability reporting that local jurisdiction can build on it, including Indonesia, if later on we decided yeah, to use it. This will certainly support company in Indonesia in the near future to report all relevant sustainability topics, not limited to climate only, under a consistent global framework and focus on how this topic would impact or increase enterprise value. Further to what we know and what I heard from Isabel and also Ibu Rosita, these standards aim to have a better connection between sustainability information and financial information. Therefore, companies will need to start putting process and control in place for gathering robust and timely ESG-related information to achieve the same quality as the financial information. So EAP, as a professional accountancy organization, will participate in providing comments on this new IWSB proposals before the closing date of consultation period, which is 29 July 2022. 
So now I would like to touch on the assurance level for sustainability report, which is your third question, Pak Ari. So as I mentioned earlier, our recent limited research on 50 listed entity reveal that 36% of these reporting have limited assurance. None of them have reasonable assurance. This result is actually very, very consistent with the benchmarking conducted by IFAC on 50 listed Indonesian companies based on the market capitalization as of 31st March 2021 last year. Yeah, so this year, actually, we did a very, very simple uh, research and the result is still the same. So we think the main reasons that those reporting have limited assurance only, none of them have reasonable assurance is because this is something new for many of us. The sustainability ESG reporting in Indonesia is still not mature at this moment, but I think in the near term, it will become more mature and mature. And the market's understanding on the costs and benefits of have a trusted sustainability reporting is still actually very, very limited. Yeah. So with that, yeah, I actually, uh, we believe yeah, that actually uh, considering the pressure from the investor community to have a trusted sustainability reporting, we believe yeah, in the long run, as the company are more mature in their governance, process and controls to produce robust and timely information. And at the same time, public accountant who will provide assurance engagement will be better equipped with technical and practical experience in providing the assurance services. There will be a movement from limited assurance to reasonable assurance at some point of time. We don't know when, but for sure, there will be in that direction. So basically, as Ibu Rosita mentioned, that the professional accountant should take a lead. I echo with that Ibu Rosita. And basically we have no doubt that public accountants are capable to provide sustainability assurance, both limited assurance and maybe in the long run, reasonable assurance. Why? Same, because they actually have the core skills, skill sets from being experienced auditors, the same skill sets, the ability to exercise professional judgment, professional skepticisms will be needed for delivering assurance engagement. Of course, the public accountants will need to further invest the time and efforts to sharpen their skill and soft skill and knowledge needed for performing a high quality assurance engagement. So when Ibu Rosita say that the time is now, in closing, I would like to say, Getting ready now is very critical in preparing our professions to be future ready for extended external reporting or new corporate reporting era. This is a game changer for our professions. ERP in collaborations with other professional accountancy organization will put our best efforts to support our profession in grabbing this exciting opportunity to make our accounting profession stay relevant and of course be attractive for future generations. So that's my comments, uh, Pak Ari. Hopefully it answers your questions. Thank you. Very clear, Mrs. Kusumaningsi. And there is a very loud optimism coming from your statements. And this is also a very, very great opportunity uh, for EAP and also for EAE to be able to work together so Indonesia can implement the reporting standard and assurance standard on sustainability reporting as fast as we can. Okay, thank you very much, Ibu Kusumaningsi, for your time and also for your presentation and for your answer. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Uh, okay, and um, for all the audience, I won't detain you for much longer. I understand it's already 1714 now. The aroma of kolak and gorengan is already around us. <laughs> so I think we need to close this session. But before we close this session, there is another one final question in the live polling. So can the committee assist me? Okay, so 
This is a very short question, a simple one. So in your opinion, how long will it take to implement IFRS sustainability disclosure standard in each jurisdiction, or perhaps in Indonesia or on your respective countries? Okay, we can start the poll now. Okay. And also while you answering the questions, I would like to say thank you for Mr. Rafi and also Mr. Sebastian for assisting us in providing a written answer for the questions in the Q&A section. I see there are lots of questions already answered. There are 17 well handled questions. Thank you very much for assisting us. And we also have to apologize to the audience because there is a limited amount of time for us. Therefore, we cannot provide a Q&A section for the audience, but I hope in the next event, we can provide more time to ask uh, some of opinion or maybe some questions from the audience. But okay, we can see now the answer. So majority said around one to three years. So maybe not in the very short time, like less than one year but one or three years should be good. Okay, thank you very much for your participation. Um, it's already 17.16 now. I don't want to detain you for any longer. So perhaps on behalf of the committee and also for all the speakers here, me and Bu Elvia would like to say thank you for your participation, for your kind attention, and also for your appreciation to us. I also would like to apologize if, if there is any trouble or if there is any mistake committing by us. And I hope we can see you in the next event. Okay, thank so, so yes. thank you very much from, from me and also from Bu Elvia and also from all of the speakers here. Thank you once again. And I will return this session back to Bu Monica. Thank you very much. Thank you.